Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I write a breadth first search in Python. Um, this is a pretty typical way that I do this. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty standard way. I don't really know if I'm being honest. But anyways, to illustrate how I write a breadth first search algorithm, I'm going to use Advent of Code because I like Advent of Code a lot. Day 24 from 2016. And the real reason I'm choosing this particular problem is because it illustrates breadth first search really well, visually even. And I just solved this problem recently. So a little behind on this one, but anyways, what we're doing is we're given a grid that looks something like this. And in this grid, there are these hash characters, there are some numbers, and there are some dots. Now they want you to find, starting from number zero, what the shortest path is um, with the shortest number of steps you can take to visit all of the points. So in this problem, your immediate gut reaction may be like mine, which is just that you have to go all the way around this thing, but you don't. In this case, it's actually faster to go from zero to four, and then to backtrack to get to one, then to get to two, then to get to three, thereby skipping all of these points. So that's roughly what the puzzle input looks like. Um, and this serves really great to illustrate breadth first search because how I ended up solving it was I ended up doing a breadth first search from any given point to all the other points. So from zero to one, zero to two, zero to four, and zero to three, one to zero, one to four, etc. Well, not too hard. It sounds hard. It wasn't too hard. And then just permutating on the different paths you can take and picking the one that was the shortest. So I don't know, we'll see how I feel whenever I get after the breadth first search is done. I may or may not show you the last part, the permutations, but this video is primarily about the breadth first search. So to start out, I'm actually gonna start by just copying the input here. Um, and I'm just gonna put it into a file called input.txt. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a good old fashioned open input.txt as read um, as f. So we're gonna open a file control called f text equals f dot read. So we're gonna read in all of the lines. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and figure out where all of the numbers are. So in this case, zero, one, two, three, and four. So I'll make this general so that we can reuse it for the larger problem, which the numbers only go up to nine if there are that many. So we'll convert numbers to um, ints for C in text if C is in the set of numbers. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that'll allow us to figure out which numbers are actually in the board. And then what we can do is we can actually break the lines apart. So lines equals line for line in text dot split on the new line character. And it'll say if line to get rid of that silly empty line that's always at the end of files. <clears throat> so what we're gonna be doing here to actually prepare to do a breadth first search is we're basically just gonna build up a graph. Um, in this graph, we're gonna have positions and we're gonna have um, spots. And the basic idea is that spots are gonna track all valid spots within the board. So for example, um, any dot is considered to be a spot and any number is considered to be a valid spot you can also walk over as well. Positions will tell us, um, given a number, where is that number? So it's just an index to look up the position of a particular number. So for y, line, and, and again, this is kind of all just set up enumerate lines. So we're going to loop through the lines with y being the index of a line for x cell and enumerate line. If the cell is a dot character, well that means we found a spot. So we'll say spots.add and we're going to use tuples to represent positions. So this is an xy pair, a coordinate pair. And then we're going to say else if, I can, I can even just make it an if, if the cell is a number, then we're also gonna add it as a spot because it's a valid spot. But as I mentioned, what we're gonna do is we're going to say 
that the position of cell is x, y. So we're just going to track where our actual values are that we care to look for. So the next thing that's really useful in a breadth first search algorithm, this is basically our graph, except there's no way to know at this point what points are neighbors to other points, which is very useful. So basically, if you are right here, for example, this is a neighbor and this is a neighbor. This is not a valid neighbor because it's a wall. This isn't a valid neighbor. This isn't, and you can't go diagonally in this particular problem. If you could, we'd have to handle it a little bit differently, but you can't. You're not allowed to. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make something called around, which will say given an x, y coordinate pair. And actually, you know what? I think I'm using a Python 2 feature there. Yeah, I'm not going to use Python 2 features. So given a position, so I can actually destructure that right here like that. Given an x, y coordinate pair, um, potentially the sides, any side is going to potentially be um, around this. So x minus 1, y. Um, x plus 1, y, uh, x, y minus 1, and then x, y plus 1. So potentially any of these spots are sides, but to be a real side, it has to also be a real spot or a dot or a number, basically. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to return back side for side in sides if side is also in spots. Let me make sure everything looks good so far. Okay, good enough. So basically we're just saying everything around this particular point could potentially be a spot, but it's only a spot if we have actually proven that it's a spot, if we saw a dot or we saw a number earlier. So now we get into the actual breadth first search part. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use breadth first search to just figure out the distance from one point to another point. So we'll call this def. Um, I, I originally called it destination, but I'm gonna call it, or distance rather, and I'm actually still gonna call it distance. So this function is to calculate distance, and we're gonna use the breadth for search algorithm internally. So source and dest. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to build up um, a list. And you might actually want to use something like a queue here because I'm going to be popping from the front, which isn't the most optimized way to pop, I believe. Um, but it works fine for this particular problem. So that's one particular, that's one potential optimization you could do to the solution. But anyways, we're going to look in positions for the source and we're going to save zero as well. So to try is going to be a, a list of pairs and the first pair is going to say, what positions do we still have to try in this search? So what have we not visited yet, in another word? Um, and this zero here is going to indicate how many steps we took to get to that particular position. So basically, this is going to serve as a queue that's going to help us enumerate things. Um, so we'll say we're at none to start at. Um, we're going to process things one by one. So to start, we were not really anywhere. Or maybe, you know what, we can actually say source. It makes sense to say we're starting at the source. And then we can say while at not positions, dest. So this is basically saying while we're not at the end, while we're not at the thing we're searching for. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say at dist equals to try dot pop zero. So this is the part that would be a little more optimal on a queue, using a queue, I believe. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say for position in around the space we're currently at. <clears throat> and we're going to say to try dot append position dist plus one. And then in the very end of this, we're going to return dist. Now, originally when I did this, I used recursion. This is, of course, using iteration because of the while loop. But this is a pretty nice thing to um, use iteration for in this case because you can tell right off the bat there's a problem with this algorithm. Um, we're going to pop values and we're going to append values. Um, there's nothing stopping me from moving a spot and then appending the last spot I was just at, moving back to that, appending the spot I was at before that, and looping infinitely. 
So what you want to do if you're doing a breath first search, this is one way to solve this problem, is it's nice to track what have I already visited. And for that, we're just going to say, well, we've already visited the, um, so we're going to use a set here. We've already visited the source because that's where we started. And then inside of here, we're just going to say if position, if the current position we're at has not been visited, it's not in visited, then we'll do this. Um, and this is, I think, in itself good enough. But even this, because once you've queued an item, that means that it will be visited in the future. So even this has a big optimization that it's missing, which is to, oh, I did this here, good. Um, which is to say, well, a couple of things. I forgot this, but I say visited add um, at, right? Once we visit a place, it's been visited. Um, but the real kicker is doing a visited add position here. Once you've queued it to be checked later, you no longer, you, you don't want to step over it again. So that's the real optimization right there. That makes this a ton faster than alternatives. And I think that's it. I think that's our breadth first search algorithm. Now, just for completeness sake, I suppose I will show how I solve the rest of the problem. But for the most part, I mean, this is it. So really quickly, let's go ahead and let's say print dist um, from zero to, oh, I don't know, let's do three. So it should give us the shortest path from zero to three. 10. So I'm going to guess that's going to, I guess that could go either way. Let's do it. Let's do one that's more clear. Zero to two. Eight. So is that right? So the click quickest way is not to go around this way, but say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. So the algorithm looks good so far. Um, but how did I actually solve the problem? Well, I'll show you that now. Um, if you have any questions, we can get back to this at some point. But basically what I ended up doing was I said, for A in numbers, for B in numbers, so permutate everything, or com combine everything, look at the combinations of everything. If A does not equal B, and A, B not in distances, so I added another value here called distances, which basically this says to get from A to B, what's the distance? So this is just keeping track of all those things for us. Um, D is going to be our distance from A to B. And then what I did is I just inserted that distance both directions because the distance from A to B is the same as the distance from B to A. So A to B and B to A. Cool. And then how I actually ended up solving this thing, and this is going to be a little ugly. I'm sorry about that. But I added um, path dist, which will take a path. So for example, you might just be really silly and say, I want to try 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be like saying 0, 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4. Um, you might decide to do something like that. So that's what a path looks like. It's just saying what you're trying. Um, and basically for this, I just said return sum of the distances um, from path at i to path at i minus 1. I'm doing a pairwise. I'm basically doing a pairwise here. Um, if you don't know what that means, that's okay. For i in x in range, Python 3 is range, 1 to length of path. So basically, what is the distance from each step, basically? Um, print, and then to solve it, I just said map. And this is where it gets a little weird, but it's a filter. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot here. Sorry about that. Um, lambda p p at zero equals zero, permutations of numbers. So basically what this is saying is since we have to start at zero, we're going to generate all of the permutations of our input numbers, and then we're going to filter all the ones that just start at zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the path distances using map, and then we're going to find the minimum one. If that doesn't make sense, I'm sorry, it's a little unclear. Maybe a list comprehension would have been a little bit nicer here. Um, but the other thing we're missing here is we have to import permutations, which is an iter tools thing, at least in Python 2. We'll uh, see what happens. So I run it now. <clears throat> I have a bug. 
min, oh, because I'm using Python 2 print, gotta put parens around it, <laughs> 14, and the problem confirms that 14 is the right answer for that. Just for fun, let's go ahead and let's um, try the real input, which is this hairy thing, just to show that I'm not fibbing, and it kind of works with the bigger input. Actually, it works pretty well, I think. So I run it, it prints out 456, which going back to the puzzle was the correct answer. Now, before I wrap this up, one thing I'd like to mention is that this breadth first search algorithm um, is pretty robust in a lot of ways. Like for example, let's say that we wanted to um, find the minimum distance, which is what we're doing, but also know the path that it took to get there. So we wanna preserve the path. Right now it just says a number back, it says dist back. Um, to do that, what we can actually do is we can say, we can just add a new value here, for example. And this is gonna store the path along with how long it took to get there. And actually, if we have the path, we don't even need how long it took to get there. We can just take the length of the path to get that, if that makes any sense. So this is saying dist, but instead we wanna say path now. And then the path is just gonna be the old path plus whatever position we stepped on, if that makes sense. Um, so instead of returning back dist, we can return back path now. And I think that's actually all we need to make this more robust so that now it returns back the entire path it took. So to do that, let's just go ahead and print what it said the path was. This should be path now. I'm not renaming the function, but I probably should. Um, I'm not going to though. But anyways, now we can say length here and everything should still work except now we should have printed out the minimum path. And just to make it um, a little more clear, we'll say print A to B min is. So if we run this, awesome. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna use a smaller input for this to make it a little more clear looking. Um, so from zero to, zero to one, we went two, one. Oops, something is not defined, D, because it's a dist. I should have said path. There we go. So from zero to one, the min is two, one, and then three, one. Zero to one, it's two, one, and then three, one. Awesome. Um, let's look at one more just for fun. From two to three, it's nine, two to nine, three. So from two to three, it's nine, two to nine, three. So there you go. Um, that's really all it takes to extend this to make it a little more robust. Um, and as you solve different problems, you'll kind of figure out where you should put these visited things because sometimes you should put them in slightly different places. Sometimes you need to track other things along the way. But overall, this is a pretty good way to write a breadth first search algorithm that finds you the shortest path given a bunch of equal distance steps. Thank you for watching.